Europa is a 3D puzzle platformer where you walk a bobble-headed character across walls and ceilings to navigate surreal levels. It's a game that released in June 2018, but there's footage on the internet of this game in 2007. 11 years, that is a long development time, especially for an indie game. I don't know how much of that time was actually spent working on Europa, but you'd hope that if a project survived for a full decade, that it was something worth doing and worth doing well. And is it? Yes. The premise and setting immediately make for a visually interesting world. Levels are chunks of urban cityscape floating up in the clouds miles above the earth. If you look around past the edges of a level you can see other floating structures, and somewhere in one direction the Eiffel Tower, damaged but still recognisable. Those other floating chunks you see are low poly versions of other levels, and they've got so many strange shapes and walls curving into floors that they look like something MC Escher would have drawn. If you look down you can see Paris below you, and you do really feel how high up you're supposed to be. It is a great setting, it's always really nice to look at. It only took me about 15 seconds of gameplay to take a screenshot as a potential thumbnail for this video, and by the end of the game I had loads of them. The levels themselves look pretty good too. I like the decision to give this game an urban setting. Europa could easily take place on abstract levels inside a void and the gameplay would still have worked, but the asphalt, poured concrete, red bricks, moss, street signs, they all give the game a lot of charm and the detail on them is pretty good too. I like the character design as well. It's a big, slightly ridiculous, bobble-headed jelly man. It's got a lot of personality, not in that it gives off any vibes about what it's feeling, but more that being a jelly man in a physics engine makes it feel so alive. Especially when you walk up a wall and it starts tilting down towards the earth like a giant yellow baby that can't support the weight of its enormous head. But it doesn't have to be yellow. I've never really been into character creation. I often find in games that a lot of options are either too minute, who cares what my eyebrows look like, or too crazy and make cutscenes jarring. But when it's something non-human that's allowed to be a little bit wacky, that's when I like to flex my creativity. Like my Rocket League car designed to look like the Savage Speeders. Ish. In Europa you get to change the colour of your avatar, add patterns and spray on decals to make any design you can come up with. I gave my character eyes, stuck a little heart on his chest and turned a moustache into a monobrow. I mean, I didn't get too creative, but I still like the range of options. The paint also turns into a diegetic health bar. If you take damage, flecks of paint start to chip away and when it all goes, you die. But dying isn't really an issue and we'll get back to that later. My only downside on the graphical front is that I had to turn the game down to 30fps from 60 while I was recording because I was getting some frame drops. Playing in 30 frames per second was no issue because this isn't a fast action game, but it does suggest that this might not run particularly well on weaker devices. The soundscape is also really nice. What you'll hear throughout most of the levels is something quite peaceful and calm. I like it, although it can at times get a little bit repetitive. I'm not sure if it's a few tracks that play or a set of pieces that flow into one another, but the tone and mood of them is usually about the same. I'm actually not sure if any of the music in this game is specific tracks, or if it's all just pieces that jump in after certain triggers. The non-standard levels do sound different though, and overall the audio does a good job of setting the tone for whatever activity is in front of you. The sound effects are decent too, for things like pressing buttons, finding collectibles, shooting boxes through pipes, or falling to your death and respawning. I heard that one a lot. You probably will too. It's easy in the beginning to get disorientated and forget where down is. There doesn't really seem to be a story to the game. You sort of get the feeling that you're trying to fix the Eiffel Tower, but it really doesn't matter. It's abstract and surreal and it's fine like that. But let's get on to the gameplay. When I first played Europa I got tripped up trying to work out how to describe the physics. Gravity acts normally and then you stand on a surface and gravity changes to meet that new surface. If you walk around a curve then gravity shifts with you, but if you have a step off the plane gravity resets to normal and you drop. But you can forget all of that, I'm just an idiot. You've actually got plungers on your feet. Gravity always acts down towards the earth below you, but through suction you can walk on walls. If there's a curved surface you can use that to move from a horizontal onto a vertical, but you can't move onto a surface at a right angle to yours. The exception to this is if you're walking up a flat wall onto the top of it, but try it the other way round and you'll fall. The levels are all designed around this, strange Escher-esque looking shapes with right angles and curves that you have to figure a route through to get to everything you need. 
The way you progress in Europa is by moving through doors, but usually doors won't be open when you reach them, and you'll have to find the switches, buttons and tiles that power up wires to open the doors. Doors in Europa move you between levels and you can see all the interconnected paths on the map in the menu. These wires might lead somewhere else on the level and you'll need to work out how to move across the weird architecture to go and do whatever you need to do. Maybe you just need to figure out the puzzle of the layout and the route to walk. Maybe you need to carry a box to put on a button. But some wires go further. A lot further. Some wires might flow out of a door and onto a whole new level. It's the first aspect of the game that's inspired by Metroidvanias. The way forward isn't always directly forward, and tends to involve a little wandering around and finding new levels in a more sprawling fashion. The other way this game channels Metroidvanias is with its abilities. You might see a closed door and start following a wire, but it's no guarantee that you can definitely reach the switch. To do that, you might need to learn a new skill. Typically in Metroidvanias, one of the first skills that you learn is a double jump, but that's not the sort of game that Europa is. The first skill you learn in this game is an ability to look around. This is obviously useful for searching a level to see where to go or to find the collectible pink cassette tapes, but it's also used for a specific type of light grid puzzle where a hint to the shape you should be making will be printed somewhere else on this island. This ability for me is also a sign of the developers understanding their game's strengths. Having an ability to zoom out and rotate a camera around these fascinating mini levels is something you would want even if it gave you no advantage whatsoever, because these places are just cool to look at. This is something that good metroidvanias do. They make you want to be able to do a specific thing, and then at some point they give it to you as a reward. Almost every time I got an upgrade in Europa, it was something that I had already been thinking about, which made them feel like much better rewards. Throughout the whole game, there was one ability that I kept wishing I had because it would make levels easy, but I knew that it would also be genuinely game-breaking and understood why it wasn't an option. But you know what? At the end of the game, one of the final abilities you learn was this. I'm not going to show it because it's something that happens quite late on, but it blows the game wide open. If you play Europa, I'm sure you will have exactly the same reaction at this moment. It's great design, and it made me want to go back in and achievement hunt after the credits. On top of that, the levels where these abilities are given to you are also really cool. They involve lighting up all four quadrants of a panel on the floor, and when you light them up, the world goes crazy. It starts blaring out some mystical music, gravity drops nearly to zero, and you just feel like a superhero. If you want to make player upgrades feel awesome, you have to make them a bit of a spectacle, and Europa absolutely does that. This Metroidvania-style approach is cool, but I wouldn't describe Europa as a Metroidvania. Not just because they're typically 2D action platformers and this is a 3D puzzle platformer, but more because one of the key elements of a Metroidvania is how the interconnected map drives exploration. Europa, in that regard, is more linear. You will have multiple options for which doors to open and where to go, but in the long run you'll be completing three separate areas one by one that only connect through a hub at the base of the Eiffel Tower. It's a puzzle platformer that uses Metroidvania elements well, but it isn't for me a Metroidvania. These upgrades give you more ways to traverse and interact with the world. I won't mention them all, but after the look around feature, some of the early upgrades allow you to pick up objects followed by an ability to kick them. As I said before, these abilities are already things that I was kind of thinking about. The kick, in particular. A lot of the items in the game world can be interacted with. You could walk into things and push them around or knock them over, so as soon as I got the ability to kick them, I just started kicking the living daylight out of everything nearby. And as another example that these developers knew what they were doing to make the game satisfying, there are even footballs. That's a pretty decent kick. Probably not good enough for the top level of football, but maybe the Europa League. To me, all of this goes back to that long development time from inception to release. Because Europa doesn't just have a solid premise, it has so much polish too. The items that are fun to drag and pick around, the magic atmosphere when you gain a new ability, even little things like when you fall from a medium height somewhere between a safe landing and death, you get little buttons swirling around your head that you need to click away with a satisfying sound effect. 
I haven't even mentioned that this game has two enemy types to throw in some quirks to other levels, as well as a sliding slash skateboarding type ability, and three unique stages that each get their own vehicle. Such a lot of work has gone into making Europa an exciting game. The vehicles don't necessarily handle particularly well, but that doesn't stop them from being exciting to find, and they still all fit the game's urban metro vibe. There is just a huge amount to love about Europa. It isn't completely without flaws, but I did not find many. If you're on the hard difficulty mode, when you die you get returned to the start of a level rather than a checkpoint. But because this isn't a game where completing a stage in a short time or in a single go adds anything interesting, it's a much better experience if you just play it on easy. The only real issue that I had was with one of the abilities, which was the jump, because mechanically it isn't the best. I'm not entirely sure what it is about the jump, but it feels a bit like an uncontrolled lunge, and I felt like I was whiffing far more simple jumps than I probably should have been. Europa took me about six hours to beat, but there was more time to be had in collecting all the cassettes afterwards. I'm not usually a collect em up achievement hunter type of player, but when a game is built around movement and traversal, then figuring out how to traverse over to collectibles just gives you more of the core gameplay. And especially once you've unlocked abilities and expanded your moveset, it's fun to go back and dominate the twisting, awkward levels that used to be a challenge. This is a game with a really high level of polish. The concept on its own is strong, but the stunning visual design adds a huge amount to that solid foundation. I like the character design, I like the sound design, I like the physics-based objects, I like the creativity. It is a slow puzzle platformer, and you'll have to like those sort of games to enjoy Europa, but if you do, I reckon this game is a must play. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you've played Europa or if you go and play Europa after this video, feel free to come back and let me know what you thought about it in the comments. If you're not already following this channel, why not subscribe to get notified about the videos that I'll release in the future. And if you're looking for something to watch right now, then I've put a video on the screen of my favourite game of 2020, Intergalactic Fishing. Thank you for watching and goodbye.